Good morning ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining my webinar. My name is Steve Ofterheid and today I'll present how to directly grid seismic stacking velocities in Petrosis. Please note that this webinar is being recorded so that we can upload it to the website at a later stage for those that might miss out. And please hold all questions until the end of the presentation and I will answer those at that time. You can always send us an email to support at petrosis.com.au to ask any questions at any stage as well. A quick agenda, why grid seismic stacking velocities in the first place and what data types can we use to do so. I'll run through a quick demonstration on how to do that and then provide a summary on the benefits. Okay, so why do we grid seismic stacking velocities? Well, a lot of geos would prefer to use well velocities in most cases, but sometimes stacking velocities are all we actually have to work with. So whilst this may not be ideal in all situations, it's certainly a good start to uh, provide data like that. As we are aware, Petrus has always been able to import stacking velocities into their seismic data file, and this is still the same case today. As of version 17.6, however, we have now added the ability to directly grid stacking velocities, making the whole workflow a lot easier. Now, a lot of spec 3D surveys these days contain so much information that it's really hard to import it all into our SDF, even allowing for decimation. This is the main reason we actually added this ability. So what data can we use? We can actually grid directly various data sites types, uh, including SegY, ASCII velocities with various formats like Western, SOV2, Promax, Handbell, etc., STF data, and also stacking velocity data stored in DBMAP databases. The only caveat on gridding of stacking velocities is that the files must have a coordinate set for each stacking velocity function, and they can be in either easting, northing, or lat long. Now, the two-way time data that we use to go to VF can come from various third-party data sources like Petrel, IHS Kingdom, Dug Insight, Paradigm, or even Petrosis Grids, etc. So what data are we using today? Uh, it's based on Gippsland Basin, offshore Victoria, and it's courtesy of the Department of Primary Industries in Victoria. So let me run through a quick demonstration on how easy this is to do. On the left hand side, I have a map that uh, shows the area of interest. I have a clipping polygon that I'll be using to clip the data with respect to uh, this area. Uh, that's onshore Australia and some well data. I'll open an existing task file. This is a fairly simple task. It creates a two way time grid from a text file for the top trobe formation. It then creates an average velocity grid directly from the SegY stacking velocity data we have in the SegY file. It then uses grid processes arithmetic to compute a depth grid from those two-way time and VF grids. And then it uses grid well tie to actually tie that data to a WDF data. The part that we're interested in today is this bit, gridding of stacking velocities. Click on input data, click on the plus. Stacking velocities is now a new data type to add, sits down the bottom. When you select it, you get two tabs, one for velocity, one for two-way time. Our velocity tab shows multiple data sources, SegY files, Petrus DBMAP, SDF, text files. In this case, I've selected a SegY file. I've assigned a CRS to that particular SegY file. It's selected a format already, 3D, and this particular format. This is a best match. It does a fuzzy logic match to do that, 76.9%. We have a lot of formats here that uh, are available, and if you don't have one that actually matches any of your data, please send us some information and we can actually create one for you. If you can do it yourself, you can always go under define a format if you know what they look like. Text file headers, binary headers, trace headers, trace data. If you can do all of that by assigning the information yourself, please feel free to do so. We recommend you click the preview data button once you've actually selected that format. This just shows you that the information is in fact stacking velocities and something that you can actually use. We have had instances where trace data was used and that obviously doesn't work. But this looks like a stacking velocity file. These straight lines are the minus 999 ones which are just null values. Clicking on our two way time tab, you can use interval velocity using DICs where you can select several grids or constants. Average velocity using inverse DICs or assign input with no conversion. In this case, we're using average velocity using inverse DICs. We can have a constant two-way time input, so a value you type in, or a grid. In this case, I've selected grid, and our data sources can be Dug Insight, Kingdom, 
OpenWorks, Petrel, Paradigm, or in my case, the Petrosis grid file that I created in the process before. I've left the minimum value to accept as zero just to avoid the 999s. My output geometry, I've just set it to a grid for the area of interest. In this case, it's gonna be the two-way time grid I created before. Method, standard gridded, minimum curvature. Clipping, I've actually clipped the data with respect to this polygon, just so that it doesn't go out to the edge of the map sheet. Now, if I run that task, this will take the information from the SegWi file at uh, nine locations based on the information from the two-way time spot. It will then uh, create a spline fit through those points, grid them all up, and then clip the data with respect to this polygon. Now that that's finished, I can show you the grid. That's my grid clipped to the polygon. So this is the average velocity grid to the top trope formation based on the two-way time grid. All pretty easy. I have another stacking uh, task file rather. This is to uh, create them from various data sources, including multiple ASCIIs. Let's look at that. My input data, three data sets that I've selected. So long as each of the formats or each of the files that you use is based on the same format in each of these particular runs, then you won't have a problem. My first set comes from Western format. I have three of those. Open them, assign a CRS. This is automatically picked up that it's the best match to Western 3D chords. Browse data just to see that, yes, this looks like a Western format file. Again, preview data just to make sure that we're looking at the right information. Yes, that looks like a stacking velocity. Next set comes from SOV2 format. We can select both of those. Again, it's automatically computed that it's a best match to this Gibson Basin SOV2 format, which it should be because I created it to match it. Browse data just to see, yes, this is certainly a much different format to what we had before. You'll notice that each of these functions has an easting northing value associated to them, making it easy to grid. Preview data, very little relief in this, uh, and the data is fairly large over the time, uh, but it is certainly stacking velocity data. Last data set in this run, Promax format. Select both those two files. Again, assign a CRS. Again, this is a different format, Gibson Base and Promax. Again, I created this to match it. Browse data just to see that, yes, this looks like an old Promax type format. Again, you can see that it has an X and Y location associated to it. Preview data. Yes, that looks like stacking velocity data, so I'd be happy with that. Again, the two-way time hasn't changed at all. Same two-way time grid that I was using before. Output geometry stays the same. In this case, my clipping, I've actually clipped it with respect to a data envelope or a convex hull with a 500 meter um, area. And that's just to show that the information sits within this particular zone of interest. Now I won't run that task. It does take a couple of minutes, but I have actually got the, the grid displayed here. That's the grid clipped to a convex hull. You can see pockets of information where the actual stacking velocities have worked. The rest of it's been interpolated because there was no other further data in there. But for proof of concept, it's certainly an easy process to use. Let me go back to my slide, my PowerPoints. Final thoughts, gridding stacking velocities is now a lot easier. Uh, we believe that the addition of this has made uh, that whole workflow far simpler. You can actually now grid larger data sets. So if you've got your stacking velocities and they're five or 10 gigabytes uh, based on the uh, size, you can actually grid those without having to load them in the first place. As it's all workflow enabled, uh, it can be scripted and looped over so that you can actually create multiple runs using various different uh, two-way time uh, formations. So all fairly easy. So thank you for your attention. If you've got any questions, I'd be happy to answer them now. If you have anything further, please uh, email support at petrosis.com.au for further contact. Uh, thank you for listening.